Hello again. Let's talk about this new antiviral drug called Molnupiravir. Terrible name. Hopefully they'll get a better one soon. But uh, it's a new drug which has come into the market, which claims to be the first pill to really have a successful impact on COVID treatment. Now, Remdesivir is the one you might remember, which was made famous by Donald Trump last year, actually doesn't have any real good evidence backing up its effect on survival or treatment. And in fact, the WHO has recommended against its use for treatment. But this one is different. And the first trial results of Molnupiravir uh, were released last Friday in a press release. So it's, it's really brand new to the market and looks to be really promising as a pill, not uh, an injection, to treat COVID infection. So I want to just take you through some of the uh, data that are behind the, these claims that came out in a, a press release. So it's not a full paper but uh, it was a fairly detailed press release that's got quite a lot of excitement. So essentially there were 775 volunteers of unvaccinated, at-risk, non-hospitalized patients with mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19 that were recruited to take part in the trial. Okay, so they were recruited first, known to be at high risk, and uh, when they first had symptoms of uh, COVID, they took either the molnupiravir or randomly allocated to placebo or dummy drug. Okay, so that's, that's the design. That's a randomized controlled trial. It's the best possible way of looking at a study. It's not observational. And uh, because they're randomized, it cuts out a lot of those uh, noise effects that you might get with some other drugs and, and many of the other ones we've been talking about it don't have this real proper randomization. So following a month of the trial, the scientists found that the molnupiravir reduced the risk of going to hospital or death by around 50%. That's pretty big. So 7.3% of patients who received the antiviral drug were either hospitalized or died through day 29 following randomization compared with 14.1% of the placebo treated patients, that's 53 out of 377, through the same uh, time period, that first month. And absolutely no deaths were reported in patients who received the molnupiravir compared to eight deaths in those who received placebo. So all this suggests it's a really promising early treatment uh, in those that have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and especially reassuring for those at-risk patients because they were the ones included uh, in, the, in the trials. And the other thing to note is the, the variants uh, that these were tested on, because it was done all around the world at different stages, were included the Delta, the Mu and the Gamma. So it's likely that this protective effect covers all the uh, recent variants uh, of the virus and suggest a broad range effect uh, on, uh, on COVID-19 and the variants. So how exactly uh, does it work? Uh, well, it's quite complicated, but um, when the drug enters the body, it pretends to be one of the components of the, the, the virus uses uh, with its special enzyme, this RNA polymerase, to replicate itself. So it's one of the building blocks that uh, the virus tends to pick up uh, to make new, new RNA, really, uh, in order to propagate. And because these building blocks are, have an abnormality in them, uh, this makes uh, mutations occur in the virus so that it really uh, self-destructs because its building blocks are flawed and it, it, it can't uh, exist. And then it, it stops working. So we know that viruses do mutate as they replicate normally. That's how we get these um, variants, the beta, the, the gamma, the delta, etc. cetera. Uh, but it essentially uh, goes much further than that. And this extreme mutation means that it, it can no, no longer survive. 
So um, these are still early trials and, and it's not a huge group, but it's, it's still a, a large study by uh, any accounts. Uh, and these initial uh, results are extremely promising. Uh, we haven't seen the full paper, hasn't been peer reviewed. Uh, we, the group excluded uh, special groups, as is usual at this stage, such as pregnant women, and we don't know about uh, their use there. It also excluded those without um, some at-risk factors or comorbidities, and obviously didn't occur in really young people uh, or really, really old people. Um, and it was also only given to those unvaccinated and those with early symptoms of COVID-19. Um, and so if you're already hospitalized or you'd uh, had severe symptoms for a, a while or long COVID, uh, it, 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 uh, it wasn't tested. So we don't know the answers there. So far from the data we've seen, we don't think it has any major side effects, but it's difficult to be sure until we see the actual paper. And uh, that hasn't been published yet. Um, and it'd be also interesting to see whether it works as well in those who have already been vaccinated uh, as uh, many people have, uh, but are still getting breakthrough uh, infections. So the drug has great promise, but uh, a downside at the moment is that it's being sold in the US for around $700 a course for the, the five days. Uh, but it's been worked out by Harvard School of Public Health and colleagues at King's College Hospital that the real cost, if you uh, uh, just took the ingredients, would only be about um, $18 uh, for that five day course. So the sale price is gonna to have to come down if it's gonna be used uh, widely and, and, and given to people in case like a sort of emergency uh, course. Uh, but with high rates, particularly in the US and the UK at the moment, in the UK, you know, we're still getting over 600 um, uh, hospitalizations a day uh, and 150 of those uh, turning into deaths, unfortunately. Uh, this is clear that if this treatment was available and you could cut that by half and the deaths even more so, it would be have a huge impact uh, on uh, the ongoing uh, pandemic and the fact that it can be given as a pill you can you can give it to people then take it themselves means they don't have to go to hospital uh, to try and get that preventive benefit uh, remember this doesn't replace uh, vaccination which remains the cornerstone of preventing this disease uh, just re reducing the risk of, of, of going to hospital is obviously not uh, going to uh, massively change the transmission uh, and uh, the pandemic uh, effects of such a virus and you're much better off uh, being fully vaccinated giving you that 80-90% protection in the first place uh, and this is really only a uh, belt and braces on top of that uh, rather than uh, instead of being vaccinated. Um, and by preventing yourself against getting COVID in the first place, uh, we, you shouldn't need to think nearly as much about getting treatment in case of a, a breakthrough. Because if all of us did get vaccinated, we really wouldn't have this problem at all. We, we managed to get our vaccination rate from the current 67% to about 85, 90%. We wouldn't even be uh, worried in the, in the same way we are now. So anyway, uh, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll see what the the full paper shows, but it's really exciting that we have this uh, monopiravir drug as a potential early treatment for those suffering from COVID, and also I think potentially other viral diseases. And um, that could be a big thing because at the moment we are very much short of treatments for those. So thanks for listening and uh, we'll keep in touch.